What's going on, Average Joe readers and all you book fans out there of sci-fi and fantasy or whatever. I am bringing to you my very first book review, and it is going to be Escape Reality by Kayla Foster. Before I get too much into that, one thing I also just want to say is that uh, I'm also going to be having my, since this is my first review, I have developed or I guess thought of my own book rating system. And I think everybody that does reviews or a lot of people that does reviews kind of make up their own rating system or puts their own spin and twist on it. So of course I wanted to do my own spin and twist on a rating system because rating something within a one to five stars is just not enough. And books are so much more subjective than that. You know, you could pull out, you know, three or four different five-star reads on my shelves. And I would say distinctly, which one was better than the other, but how do you actually distinguish rating wise? So I developed my own uh, new rating system, which I'll talk about after I wrap up my uh, review. So I just wanted to preview that as well. So you can see what my rating system is and even think of it as yourself. I tried to make it um, a little bit unique and uh, a couple of different factors for considering books. Uh, another thing I will say is that this review will be spoiler free. Everything will be spoiler free. This book is still fairly new, so I don't think there's much point talking about spoilers. And I just think all of my reviews, I want to do spoiler free because it's not of a, I don't really want to go into a deep discussion about the books. It's more of a, my pitch to get people to read it. And that's kind of what I'm going to go after with my reviews. So I'm probably going to do more likely reviews that are lesser known books, kid unlimited books, ones that don't have, you know, multi thousands, thousands of reviews that are just all everybody's reading on, on booktube because there's all kinds of reviews for them around. Um, I'm not saying I won't do any of those, but I think I just really want to get, talk about the books uh, for more people to read them. Uh, so Escape Reality. This is a Kindle Unlimited read, one of the Kindle Unlimited reads that I have been doing. And I've actually talked to Kayla a few times. She's super cool, super responsive. So uh, she's on Discord, on uh, Mike's Discord, on um, the self-pub author's Discord, and I think another one. But she's on Discord, she's very reachable. Uh, and, uh, this book also just won as of a couple of days ago, the gold award for the reader's views, literary award. So she, her, her sci-fi book run gold, which is really awesome. A, uh, a really great step. So I think that, that in itself should be enough for you to uh, check this book out if you're into sci-fi. So getting on to the book. Uh, reading the, the synopsis is actually really good to do. I know sometimes people like to go into books a little bit, um, dark, a little bit like they just don't want to know anything going into the book, but I think reading the synopsis right before you read this book will help paint the picture because at times it doesn't really hold your hand to. So the book is about a, basically a cyborg, which they call synths. And these synths are, uh, have their people that can, if you're a synth, that means you can, your body is accepting to external, uh, hardware and the higher degree of synth you are, or I, I think the more accepting your body is and the more your body can be altered. So the main character is a synth and she was in the first generation. So there's, I think there's 10 or so generations of synth and each one, something changes or they get a little bit less, but the first generation of synth is like the most dangerous the, um, the, the baddest of the bad. She is a synth and she is awoken after 30 years cryo and lands on a prison planet. So she is a cyborg stranded on a prison planet. And uh, so that just screams prison break from a cyborg, which to me is freaking awesome having a prison planet uh, as, as the setting and a cyborg to go through this. So her, because she's been in um, cryo so long, her, her dry systems, which are her synthetic hardware is trying to reboot and trying to get acclimated to what she is. So really her, her she's just trying to fit her human part of her is figuring out most of it, but her, uh, her dry side is still trying to reboot and, and, and catch up. So there's the, both the blending of organic and synth synthetic technology, which is really, really cool. And they're not only hers, but a lot of characters in this book have that but not only on are there people with augmentation. So that's one side of it, which I think is, is really cool to have in a book in itself it's for the, you know, how much someone is augmented compared to another, their drive versus their wet systems is really cool. To, and uh, the more they have, it seems to be the more of a, of a power struggle within. So that is cool in itself. But on the other hand, there's another set of mishmashing of 
of uh, beings, I guess you could say, and that is these alien races. And that is there's five or so uh, sexually and reproductively compatible alien races. And it was actually a big um, campaign to try and get more species to in- intermix, intermingle, um, cohabitate, how I want to put it, um, to see which one would blend the best races, the best, the most unique um, offspring. And as you're going through the book, there is descriptions of when it, whenever she would describe these people, it would describe them by their like two races that they are hyphenated and which one they favor over the other and that how they would uh, alter their um, either personality or their physical appearance and little things like, oh yeah, you know, it is this race mixed with this and you could tell it's more this because their uh, skin is, tint- is tinted green or something like that. So you have the organic and the synthetic synths that are blending. Then you have actually alien races that blend as well. And there's even some that there's overlap with those as well. So I guess think about it as a Venn diagram, there's overlap with all of it. So this just makes a hodgepodge mishmash of all different kinds of beings and creatures and really gives a lot of depth and um, a lot to work with when it comes to characters and plot and action and all that stuff. It was really, really cool. Uh, you have the prison setting, which a prison break is great. I haven't read, I actually haven't read many uh, prison stories at all. So immediately I was on board with um, the story. And then another uh, character that you meet early on, Tekrin, him and the uh, main character, Synth uh, Edith, they interact in the beginning in their conversation. I thought that was also really cool and bringing you in. And the conversation that they had, it was like a quick um, he helps her when she when she first lands to go and and get to the uh, get inside the prison, and their conversation was cool because I, I don't really want to say too much, but how they reacted toward each other and how they viewed each other and it was kind of like a, and you you have multiple POVs you go back and forth in POVs and they're they're kind of both just like why is this person so weird, and you know but they don't know and it's kind of it's it's pretty entertaining. And I wish there was more of it. I wish that conversation was longer or more su- stuff like that happened because I think more humor and just uh, uh, could have been fleshed out with it along those lines. I think that was that would, be, uh, would have been a great way to flesh out more information about uh, what's going on, the setting, the prison, and all of that. Uh, and uh, this is actually a great segue into the negatives, which I'll get into, and that is you're kind of just thrown into things and there's no hand-holding. Um, a lot of, in the beginning, there's stuff that you pick up, but there's also a lot missing. It's like when um, some, some things are, you're meant to find out on your own organically through the story, and you end up do finding out pretty much everything that you need to know, but it takes a while, some things. So it, while it's it's definitely not going to be info dumpy, which I don't say that it should have some sort of info dump, I just wish in the beginning there was a little bit more, a little bit more introduction, a little bit more giving to you, even if it was like a, a little bit of a hint as to, Hey, I'll need to figure this out later in the, in the perspective of that person. And then like, okay, cool. I know that we're going to figure this out later versus in the beginning of this, I think things were just happening and it was just glossed over glanced, you know, completely passed. And you're just like, wait a minute, did I miss something? I what's like, you know, you don't, you almost know nothing about this prison. You're just giving like a little, little tidbit of it. And you still like, to me, I, I don't know if I missed something, but you still don't know a whole lot about this prison or the guards or anything like that. So you're kind of just left wondering what's going on and if you're going to find out stuff versus giving a hint of like, yeah, we'll find out this later. So I think in the beginning, it could have given you a little bit more um, information as to what's going on. Uh, also in the beginning, I think I mentioned this in my, uh, my update the other day, but the beginning of this book kind of suffers from speed wobbles. And what I mean by speed wobbles is, trying to go too fast too soon and things get a little wobbly, a little shaky, and it's almost too much going on at once. That's kind of what I, uh, what I mean. And as I was going through like the first third of the book, I was, you're kind of having to put pieces together and assume certain things, assume you'll find out certain things, but I was kind of confused at a decent amount of what was going on, whether it was the beginning of either story, or then when you go out to a new perspective into uh, something that's going on in space, I was really confused there as well because there was so much going on and you're just throwing a whole bunch of POVs. So I think if that would have been kind of stretched out a little bit, a little more information given, 
a little more things, a little clarity um, in the beginning would have been good to help uh, help progress through. Uh, hopefully, when people go to read this book, they will just push through all that and realize that um, you will learn everything toward the end or as you go through. Like past the fifty percent mark is when you're like, oh, okay, that that makes sense. Oh, okay, now that makes sense, and that's just how it kind of happens. But I think that you know, picture somebody, a, a friend, trying to tell you a story that they're really, really excited about, and they're just talking and talking, and you can't get an Edward and Edward, and just going from one sentence to the other, and then you're just random and random, and they're going this and this and that and that, and then you're just like, all right, I think I got what you're saying, but I'll figure it out. Uh, and you, that's just kind of how I feel like the beginning was. There was just so much kind of thrown at you, and you're just kind of like, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll pick it up and we'll figure it out later. And then eventually you do. So that is the main, my main negative with it was the beginning was a little shaky, a little rocky and you are kept in the dark on purpose for a lot of things. And there's some things that need to be kept in the dark and uh, that need to be revealed later, which I like. So that, that is both a negative and a positive um, that it's okay to be confused in this book because things will get cleared up and the POVs that you have and the protagonist, they don't know either. So you're figuring it out with them as well. Uh, but there's a few things that I think could have been cleared up or at least like hinted at that it would be cleared up uh, later on. As far as the another what the organic synthetic personality ones, one of the characters has uh, so that they, they appear a certain way. So their uh, synthetic parts kind of have either hallucinations or you have their own little they, they distort the user's uh, brain some so that that's why, you know, what's real and what's not. But there's also one character that actually has developed and has a completely separate personality. So there's two completely separate personalities that this person has. I did, it took me several chapters to realize that it was actually the same person, but two different personalities within the same person. For a while, I thought it was completely different people because even in the book, the it's a, it's listed as like, you know, chapter or whatever, but then it has the person's perspective that you're on, which I love in books. And through the book, it was lit, like these two personalities were listed and it took me a while to realize, oh wait, they're actually the same physical person. They're just both in the same mind. And maybe I just missed something that that could have been an error on mine. I think it's really cool um, as, as everything. I think everything in here is really awesome is just how it's introduced, I think could be confusing to a lot. And, I, and for a while I was confused some. So once you get into it, after you're past the first third or so of the book, things start to click and you're into it. And then it is, it's, it, it's all a go. Some the the abilities that some of the synths have, especially the main one, it's kind of like a soft magic system, if you will. Like, and normally you would think, okay, this is technology. Technology has rules, it has parameters, but sometimes these synths just have like these abilities that are just seem almost seem endless. And uh, the amount that she can do, and I know she actually is supposed to be this super awesome badass, but at times you're wondering, like, okay, what can't she do? And then also the last, very last thing is there was a character that's a POV and toward the end, they die very abruptly. And I really hope that's not the case. I hope they stay in the next book, but the death felt really sudden and cheap. Like it almost felt like that person was pointless to the story, but hopefully that, it, you know, it's one of those, like you assume they're dead, but I could see them coming back in the next. And I really hope they do because I think it could be lead to a really good character. Overall thoughts it is really, really good. I think it is super creative what she's done with all the types of characters and beings and, you know, having the, you know, it's, it's one thing to have cyborgs in yours, but it's, there's a different levels of cyborgs and these synths, how they mesh together and what different levels they have and how it also interacts with different alien species. Cause there's certain aliens that are synths as well. So I'm excited to see where it goes uh, ahead. The prison break was pretty cool. And there were a lot of things that also just kind of got glossed over there. So there's a lot going on in this book, but I think it is a, is it, once it gets the momentum going and once you get um, in the right mindset and, and know what's going on, it's really, really good. And how it's also like, it's also very encouraging to see where it's going to go. I think once the story gets legs, you'll be good to go to uh, continue on and read it. And I'm really excited to get to uh, the sequel because this is a start to a series and I can see why it could be uh, good going forward because the she basically she kind of assembles a crew, in or a crew is assembled to do this prison break, and each person has their own 
specialty quality and uh, how they get through it. And I think that will be really cool to see going forward. It's a really good setup book, I think, and a good intro to all of the characters. So that is really cool. So yes, I would recommend this. And going into my rating system. So now to talk about, for my rating system, I needed to think of something that was more than just one to five, because there needs to be way more distinction than that. And just increasing it to one to 10 wasn't enough either. I also wanted to consider, I wanted it uh, factoring in page or book length as well, because to me, uh, reading is, re reading takes a while. Books take a, a while to read. So to me, you know, time is money. And uh, if I wanted to make sure that how long a book takes to read is is worth is either worth of the read for that long or how it compares because it's that long. Even like a 300 page book is just okay, but an 800 page book is really good. They could come out to be around the same score because the 800 page book took so long and there might have been a, a couple of you know dry times pacing wise might might have been a little bit off. So I wanted to uh, quantify the time you spend reading a book to factor it. And I was also playing, I was one day I was doing a whole bunch of math and I'm not a mathematician. I don't know math too much. I also wanted to factor in cost, uh, like cost per page or enjoyment per page, but that just got really into the weeds. So I'm just going to keep it simple for now and maybe I'll pick up something later. So uh, it's only three scores that I do and each scores is on uh, one to 10 or a zero to 10. I guess you could do zero if you really wanted. Uh, but the three things that I ju will judge on is overall enjoyment of a book. So Instead of just a one to five, it's a zero to 10 overall enjoyment uh, rating of a book. The balance of the book, this is when the length of a book kind of comes into where if you have a really long book and there's some really dry, slow, boring parts that you have to slog through, uh, then that's then that might be a deduction. Or if it's just too, too much, too fast, too, too crazy, then that could also be a deduction. So a balance of the book to, you know, so that it's balanced out for enjoyment throughout. And then recommendation. How likely are you to recommend the book? And that is simply because, so how likely would you be to recommend that book? So for escape reality, rating wise, I am going to give enjoyment a seven out of 10, a balance, a six out of 10. And that was due to some of the speed wobble concerns I was talking about. Um, not necessarily it went slow. It was just a little too much too fast. And recommendation seven out of 10 as well. Uh, I definitely do recommend this if you're into sci-fi and these kinds of stories. I think it's it's only like 330 or some pages long, so not too long either. So yes, I would definitely recommend it. So a total score of a 20 out of 30. And to give context to that, it might seem like a big deduction, you know, 20 out of 30. But for reference, I did I tested this uh, my rating on other books that I absolutely love: Kings of Paradise, Red Rising, and Raira books. Um, those three absolutely love, they are sure five-star books and I, I really, really do like them. Their ratings are, were, came out to be 22, 25 and 25. So, uh, that's really why I wanted to make this scale because you can see how even your most popular, most, uh, loved books can, can, uh, differentiate and, uh, really separate themselves, uh, one way or the other. So please go check out escape reality like i said it is on kindle unlimited so you can go and get a kindle unlimited uh, subscription and read it for completely for free it is a really good way for authors to get their books out there i do want to touch on that more on another video but i really do recommend escape reality and i i'm excited to see where the series will go also let me know what you think about my rating system if you think it is good if you need tweaking if you need something adding if you would, you would consider using it, my new rating system, and we can chat about things more in the comments. And let me know if you have any other questions about this book. I will 